So what is a Chamber of Commerce and how can your business take advantage of ours? If you weren't able to make it to our Membership 101 event, that's okay, I recorded it for you and now you can listen in. First, I kind of want to go over a chamber in general for some people. So all chambers of commerce are nonprofit membership organization. A lot of us have different causes and different arms that we care about. So there's actually a saying within our industry that if you've seen one chamber, you've seen one chamber because we're all just a little bit different. But if you think about it, most of us have really small staffs as a nonprofit. So generally our strengths are going to be whatever our staff strengths are. And then we also get our guidance from our board of directors who are also volunteers. Years. So we do have a paid staff, but then we are governed by volunteer board of directors. This is our current board of directors when they were at our annual dinner last January. Like I said, they're volunteers, so we, we love them so much just for spending so much time with it, us. It is a big commitment. They usually serve a three-year term with us. And again, that can change based on chamber to chamber, and they provide a variety of important roles. But one of those is guiding us in deciding what's important to the chamber. So right now, our mission statement is that our commitment to Little River is to promote community improvement, tourism and commerce by proactive leadership and community involvement. And I know that's a little bit of a mouthful, so don't worry. I have some specific examples. So one of those you probably heard was tourism. We do this in a variety of ways. We want to promote our area businesses through out-of-market tourism. One such example is some of the ads we've placed at welcome centers across the state. We're finding people that are already traveling, they want to travel and we we want them to say hey if you're already here you know you know come up to little river <laughs> we're beautiful and nice and we have great things we have a variety of different ones that we do we have also done out of market festival advertisements again one of our goals with the festivals is to bring in tourists aka money so we're trying to make sure we get a variety of people that want to come and spend money with us and then something we also did in the past was we sponsored the South Carolina Recreation and Parks Association's annual programming summit. And basically what we did was that was a group of professionals that take group trips. So we're trying to attract the attention of those people that are planning group trips and say, hey, have you thought about coming into Little River? Like we're just trying to put Little River on the map, kind of have us in the back of their minds. And then we also have a variety of destination social media accounts, blog posts. We just published our lovely new visitors and relocation guide that I just happened to have handy. Um, So really excited about that because that's actually one of the most requested items. I get in the chamber office, even though it is a physical paper thing, a lot of people actually want it. So we brought that back this year. Another key important thing for us is the local economy. As I mentioned, we do have two festivals. These are purposely held in the shoulder seasons, aka right before the tourist season gets really big and then right after it kind of starts to slow down because we want to boost those months to really bring in a few extra tourists so that they will spend money with the local businesses. And then the way we got that $4.25 million economic impact was from a study done by CCU. So that's money that they spend in the area, not with the chamber, but just it might be a hotel, they might go out to eat, whatever it is, they estimated that our festival attendees spent about $90. And then we are always um, trying to not only keep our eye out, but create or share whatever it is. We want resources for our business community. And then we also advocate on your behalf, but I'll get into that in the next slide. The past few years, we've also been a neighborhood champion for Small Business Saturday. And this is actually an infographic from one of our events. And then we also work very closely with the local government, um, which would be Ori County but then also any of our elected leadership. So that would include our county councilmen and also our state legislatures. We do this because we want to make sure that the business climate at the community level remains positive and supportive. We want quality, sustainable growth and a thriving community, but we also want you to just be able to do business here. So we, we maintain those re- those relationships year round so that when we have an issue, we can go to them and say, hey, this is an issue. Or when they're trying to look at their agendas, we can say, okay, well, our community keeps telling us this. So please do this. And you know, like a lot of things with politics, not everything gets done right away or as quickly as we would like, but it is important for us to 
maintain those relationships so that we can eventually get what we need. <laughs> so with that, if you ever do have any concerns, yes, please forward them on to the chamber so that we can make sure um, we know one, what you care about, and we can bring those up whenever we have those strategic meetings. And then obviously we are a membership organization. So we do a lot of things that we want to assist our members with. Right now we have 300 plus membership. Most of them are businesses, but we do actually have some nonprofit organizations. We still do a lot of networking events. It's still one of the things when people come in, that's what they ask me about. So that's what we're going to work on. We've also scoured for a variety of discounts to be available to you. We create opportunities for visibility and exposure. A lot of those are exclusive marketing opportunities that I only make available to chamber members. Being a chamber member can also be a source of credibility for a business. And then we create or share a variety of business resources and training opportunities. And then we also do a variety of community reinvestments. So you don't always hear about these, but we do things, I promise. But don't worry, I'll tell you about a few of them. Um, but real quick, if anybody would, I would love to see in the comments just to see if you happen to have a favorite of any of these topics that you really love that we work or focus on. I'm otherwise going to move on to some bragging rights. Like I told you, I just kind of want you to know some things that the chamber does so that, yes, we're real. We, we don't just sit here waiting for somebody to call me where we are working. <laughs> so we work for a strong community infrastructure and a quality of life. So these efforts help our community grow and prosper. Like I said, we do a variety of community investments. That first picture you saw was the North Myrtle Beach High School wrestling team. They actually help us out at our festivals a lot, doing some heavy lifting for us. Um, we've also helped Teen Angels, which helps the homeless or just at risk or in need um, teens at North Myrtle Beach High School. So again, very local. The Little River Volunteer Fire, <laughs> Fire Department is a part of Horry County Fire Department, but I believe we have the only volunteer one. So we also like to help them out because they're hugely important to our area. And then for the Christmas tree lighting that is held at the C.B. Berry Community and Historical Center. That is put on by Ori County Parks and Recreation, but we did actually donate the large 40-foot Christmas tree in 2008, so we usually try to be a part of that. Usually it's the first Tuesday of December, but again, with COVID this year, I don't know what they'll be doing, but usually you can save that date, and it's just a really nice community event that they put on. We also help sponsor some other local community events through a partnership, again, with Ori County Parks and Recreation. These are enjoyed by locals and visitors alike, and they've done so many different ones. But just a few are Movies in the Park, Family Fun Fishing Day, The Great Pumpkin Hunt, and Movies in the Park. We also sponsor the Little River Farmers Market, which has been hosted at the public parking lot near the historic Little River waterfront. The Chamber realized the importance of this economic and community development initiative and its potential to connect locals, visitors, and restaurants with local growers, producers, artisans, and crafters. And try saying that two times fast. <laughs> And then we actually work directly with Horry County government to help install this free parking lot off of the waterfront. So if you know where the Big M Casino Boat and Crab Catchers and all the other restaurants, this public parking lot is owned by Horry County, but we did actually help initiate trying to get a public parking down in that area. And then we also worked with SCDNR to help get no wake zone signage on the ICW in Little River. So it's already a no wake zone, but a lot of our waterfront restaurants were having an issue with boaters pretty much ignoring it. Um, so we worked with a few different people, including SCDNR, just to put up new signage that helped make that impact a little bit better. And then we also maintain some of the Highway 17 and 9 medians, street lights and the holiday lights on Highway 17 and Mineola Avenue, as well as the area welcome signs. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, there's no municipality for Little River, aka no city government. Therefore, the chamber tends to try and take on things that most people expect to just happen because we, we understand why we all like them. So this has been one of those things. And then earlier, I mentioned that we were working with those parks and recreation people that were bringing group thinking about group tour plans. Well, we actually won an award from them, so we're really proud of that. We received a Champion of the Community Award. We're also a Carolinas Accredited Chamber, and Jennifer, our President CEO, has been recognized as the Carolinas Association of Chamber of Commerce Executive. And then she also just won last year the State Chamber Executive of the Year. That is still a big deal, so feel free to re-congratulate her um, the next time you see her, because that is huge. Um, because if they don't like the nominees, they just don't give out the award. <laughs> and then the one I love is that our current website is award-winning. We actually won an industry award for our website redesign. And obviously I'm super proud of that. 
which brings us to benefits of membership. So some of these are going to be general because it depends on what you're interested in. But overall, some of the different areas people are interested in are networking, publicity, discounts, referrals, learning opportunities, advertising, and creditability. We also assist with economic development, job creation, small business development, community improvements. And then, like I said, we're actively representing us with governmental relations. Really quick, this little image you see, I call it our e-badge or e-plaque. You actually got a copy of it. I'm happy to resend you a copy of it. That is one of those little ways you can add credibility if you wanted to add that to your website or somewhere else to show you're a chamber member. And then this is a study from 2012 or a quote from it. Um, so not the newest study, but 2012 is not that old either. Um, and it says that two thirds of U.S. consumers believe chamber members are reputable, trustworthy companies using good business practices, care about the customers and are involved in the community. This is just my proof to show you I'm not making it up when I say being a chamber member brings you credibility. There's a science and a reason behind it. Um, and that's because people believe it. So I'm like, hey, this is a thing. All right. And then I'm a visual person. <laughs> so I just put this quick thing together to show you that the chamber is the vision and the voice of the Little River community with, um, again, no municipality to look after local issues. We're the only organization that represents your business needs and our community to local, state, and federal agencies. By joining with other local businesses, you make up a united front for business that only the chamber can provide to strengthen and protect your business. We offer, also represent members' interests through changing outreaches such as topical programs, area disaster recovery, specialized web pages. Um, it's just, again, we're going to change based on your needs and priorities because we want to be relevant to you. Um, so again, this just shows you, we're going to take all the things that are important to you, we're going to funnel it through the chamber, and we want to create positive change somehow. And then this, uh, take with a grain of salt, if it's not what you want out of membership, that's fine. My biggest point is that if you want a specific result from your chamber membership, then you don't want to just join and do nothing. Let us know why you joined so we can help you take an active role in utilizing your benefits. So whatever benefit that is important to you, you, you kind of want to do something about it. A lot of things won't just happen. And that's really my only point. But again, visual person. Yay, more visuals. Um, so this is also in your membership packet, but I know a lot of people, numbers are important to you. So I tried to find some specific examples. This is not everything included in, in your membership, and it is hard to put a number on some things. Um, but I just wanted to show you that your, your membership does bring a good ROI. Um, and I'm a little bit biased, but a lot of chambers will tell you that chamber membership is generally underpriced. So if you're doing things and using it, you're going to get your money's worth. And then like many chambers, some of our benefits include events. So we've got an annual dinner meeting at the beginning of the new year. We celebrate our past accomplishments. We look forward to new goals and recognize some key members. So this is also when we give out our awards. We used to have business after hours, but we just rebranded it to call Chamber Connections. And that's just because sometimes it's in the morning or during the day. So we have an, a monthly networking event. We also do ribbon cuttings. These allow you to increase your networking opportunities and creates the potential for new business. You might want to host a ribbon cutting to promote your new chamber membership, a changed or new location, new management, or an anniversary milestone. So we don't want to do one for you all the time because then it loses its like shock and awe value. But we also want you to know that you don't have to be a brand new business to have a ribbon cutting. I've also seen people do ribbon tyings and then like grand reopenings. Um, and even with COVID, COVID, some people have been doing grand reopenings and that's fine. And then we also started hosting topical programs. We just call it business buzz, but each event's generally a different topic. We just want to provide a series of educational information on different topics um, to our local business owners, employees, and other professionals. So if you ever have any requests, let me know because we obviously want it to be useful to you. And then I've already mentioned our festivals as well as Small Business Saturday. So as I mentioned, chamber connections and ribbon cuttings are a great way to meet and greet other professionals and create new opportunities. While in-person events are still one of our more popular perks, um, we've gotten feedback from many people that they just don't have the time or they can't make it. So to offset this, we've created online groups for our members. And then we're also working on virtual events like this. So I would love your feedback if you end up you know, wait till the end at least. Um, let me know if you liked having Membership 101 online because I do, but I know I'm biased. I also started working with virtual speed networking. And then our website, 
that is award-winning is also fairly helpful. Don't forget that like your customers, you too can utilize our business directory to search for our members. We're also open to creating new web pages that would benefit multiple businesses and promote economic growth or visitation to Little River. These are generally updated annually. So if you feel you're left out, just let me know and I'll fix it. Obviously, we're also open to new pages if you have any ideas. So far, we've got like destination weddings, group sales, volunteer opportunities sometimes. And then I've actually written a variety of blog posts. We also have our relocation guide published online, as well as our area street map and general information about the area. I've created other useful pages for you, like listing our member benefits and some business resources in case you have any questions after hours. I've also done that with the marketing opportunities. So if you ever have questions and I'm not available, you'll be able to go to our website and I've pretty much written everything out. We also have a list of small business resources like our local SBDC, but also a bunch of other things. Because again, we want to be a resource to you. Even if we don't know the information, I want to be able to help you find the right person or place to go for it. And then again, we have a variety of discounts. I know everybody wants to save money. So the short list is Office Depot. You do get a discount card and you, if you ever lose it or do you need another one, just email me and I'll send you another copy. You can even print it out there and they'll laminate it for you because that's usually what I have to do. We also partner with Blue Cross Blue Shield, Constant Contact, which is the email marketing service provider that I use. So if you get our newsletters, this is how I'm sending them. You also get a complimentary U.S. Chamber of Commerce membership, and some businesses will qualify for the SC Chamber Alliance. Basically, you have to be our chamber member and you have to have like, I don't know, you have to be really small, which most of us are. So if you're interested in taking advantage of that, let us know and we'll send you over the details. And then we also have a variety of member to member deals. So these are ones that you as a chamber member can log into the website and add and say, hey, if you're a fellow chamber member, here's a great discount or a deal or a package or whatever it is. So I just think that's really cool because again, as a local business, I would want to help another fellow local business. These are specifically going to be about advertising and marketing. <laughs> again, my role is a little biased, but I always really want to point out the business directory listing on the chamber website. Basically, it's very important. I would go in and fill it out annually if you can, just double check your information. This is an example of Thomas Real Estate that has done theirs. They do have the paid enhanced directory package add-on. If you're a new member, you also have this because we just give it to you the first year so you can play around with it. Basically, you just get to add photos to it and you can add the little highlight section that it's showing. But even with the one that comes with your membership can make such a huge difference. I know this is a lot of information on your screen right now, but basically what you're looking at is a board report that I submitted to our board of directors last month and a screenshot done in incognito window. Um, so I didn't have my cookies of searching for Blooming Gills consignment store and their listing with the chamber website is the first thing that, that pops up on Google. So when their customers are trying to find information about them, we're the medium they're coming through basically. And then even on this board report, this is a list of page of web pages people were on social media and then they clicked through and got to the chamber website and they were number nine on that list alone. So that's pretty that's pretty high. If you ever make my top 10 list for being on the chamber website, um, in Google Analytics, which it changes a lot. And I've seen businesses come and go on that list. But anytime you make that top 10, that's crazy. But even without that, you can see we have 179 member clicks to member websites. So that's where somebody was on our website and they're like, oh, I'm going to go look at the Flying Locksmith. So then they click that website button and they went over to their website. And so that's actually 35% of our outbound lit clinks because I really like Google Analytics and I track that. So basically filling this out, keeping it up to date is really important. Even if you just put some general information out your business and you want people to click over, that's fine. We want them to click over to you. We want them to, to leave our website and call you. And this is a infographic we sent out mid-2019. These numbers were all averaged from January to June of 2019. And so you can see there's a lot of things that we're doing just on your behalf because we want to promote our members. And sometimes I, I, sometimes it's easier for me to go promote two businesses than it is for me to promote one business and tell you, but I have been trying to work on it. So this was one of the ways I did that. So we have billboards. We got a ton of website visitors, directory searches, people clicking through to your website, events. You can also list events, deals, jobs, and press releases on our website. I, like I said, I, I've been working on a variety of blog posts 
post, a lot of those do promote the local businesses. And I do click link over to your directory listing. And then we advertise in four different monthly publications. And then being mentioned into those just kind of depends on what the availability to us are. Even then, I don't always have a lot of control over it. But one of them is the Coastal Insider. And right now, they just have me submit events. So if you've submitted an event to our website, you have a higher chance of getting that free promotion. Or if you want one that you can pay for, you can get a discounted rate in the North Myrtle Beach Times and tell them you want to be on the Little River Chamber page. Basically, I submit a page of event photos and or an article, and then there's a row of ads at the bottom. So if you're a chamber member, you can ask her for a discounted ad on that page. So then we also do emails and we have at least 600 subscribers. I haven't counted it since, but it's usually somewhere in 600. And I do go through and I, I'm weird. I like it when people unsubscribe. I know a lot of people don't, but if people unsubscribe, that means they're not interested and I can focus on the people that are interested and that means your open rate goes up. So give or take. And then we have 13 different social media accounts. Five of those are more of like really chamber. The other ones are a variety of destination and festivals. But obviously we want to share information about our members on those. So we make sure we factor in a lot of those. And then again, we have our map and relocation guides. Again, this was from 2019. So I'm hoping this number goes up a lot, but we also have digital copies on our website. And I started a Facebook group for moving to Little River. I'm hoping some of y'all have heard about it, but basically that is a Facebook community. And I let a lot of things just happen. We don't let people add, but we do let people interact. And if somebody said, you can't like post and like say, hey, I'm a Mary Kay consultant. But if somebody said, hey, does anybody know a Mary Kay consultant? Or hey, does anybody have a local makeup thing that they recommend? You could comment on it and tell them, hey, yeah, I am. And, you know, get interactions that way. So you can engage and you could get leads. We just don't want you to be adsy or salesy about it. We want you to provide valuable information and just be helpful. Like I said, a community. But with that, you know, we do have, again, we're helping with relocation and helping our locals be better informed. And then, of course, we do have the visitor center inside of our office. We, we're not related to the actual like state visitor center that is run by South Carolina Parks, Recreation and Tourism, SCPRT. But we do have a good relationship with them. So a lot of times if they don't know something, they'll actually call me. And then, oh, we did radio impressions. So we stopped doing this at some point in COVID, but we do plan to get back to it with Easy 105.9. We were doing radio ads where we actually interview one of our members and we were getting compliments on it. I don't know if you've ever had somebody call you to compliment you about an ad, but it's it's really nice. Uh, <laughs> um, but that was those are very pro community, pro business, pro chamber. So it was very well rounded. And then when we get back to those, basically, if you're interested in doing one of those, just send us an email and we'll put you on Jennifer's for a short list to contact. And then uh, yay numbers. Uh, that was combined impressions for all chamber members over six months was like 514,000. So those were probably more than just what I pictured, but basically we do a lot of things. And again, I always want to be changing so that I'm focusing on what you want me to and what helps you the most. But back to your business directory listing because it's important. So usually I do start with our website anytime we talk about benefits because it, it's just, it's important. Um, so anytime you visit our website, littleriverchamber.org, you can click on directory and then you can actually see a variety, like categories, almost like a phone book of types of businesses. So you show up in multiples of those. You can also set it to where you show up in multiple categories, which is fine as long as it's relevant to you. But these not only, your directory listing shows up not only in our search, but on search engines, like I showed you before, where Bloomingdale's was on Google top page. So especially if you don't have a big online presence, it's even more important for you to be filling this and keeping it updated. And then I also like to let people know that your listing adds credibility. I talked about that before, but people really do call me just to ask me if you're a legitimate business. Like they just say, hey, I had this place call me or I did something with this. Are they a real business? Like that is a real phone call. I get probably once a month. And then your listing is also a great resource for me to give out quality referrals when customers call in and look for a specific aspect that I might not know about. So when you're going in and you're adding keywords or details, being really specific so that even I or somebody else knows that you, you provide more than one service, which many people do. And then, our, like I said, you can also add events, jobs, hot deals, which are public, member to member deals. And you can log into the Chamber website 24-7 and add as many of those as you want. 
as long as it's relevant and accurate, I don't care how many you do. So don't worry about it. Go crazy. And then also, if you're doing deals or jobs and news releases, I will usually include those in the newsletter at least once. Events, I can't do anymore because we just have so many and it used to be like 10 pages long and nobody will read that. And then just so you know, for these, I do actually have tutorials on YouTube um, that shows you how to do this. But of course, if you have trouble, you can just call me. And then we also have paid banners. So you can do a paid banner on the business directory search, but we also have ones on our sidebar now. Um, And those are a monthly fee that basically you would just kind of work with me and say, hey, this is what I'm interested in. Um, And if you don't have one... an ad or a designer on hand, I can do it for you, but it is an additional fee of $50 to the chamber. But we also do put the specs online. So if you have somebody or you're just really savvy with Canva, that's one less fee you have to worry about. And then print marketing, again, I'm I'm hoping some of this sounds familiar. <laughs> but one of the things that we used to do that we were not able to do in 2020 was with, was we had a printed quarterly newsletter that we mailed one to each member and that was called Making Waves. You are open to one free ad, but then after that, we do charge money. And I do plan to get back to that. But again, we're always changing based on your needs and priorities. And during COVID, this was a one. And then we did the street map for Little River. And then you can also distribute marketing materials through us. So if you have any flyers, rack cards, or business cards, just drop them off at the chamber office. If you ever see me at an event, you can hand them to me there and I will take them to the chamber office for you. But we want to be able to turn around and hand those to the walk-ins that we get. And then we also collect promo items. We get requests from the public in general for items to put into like their golf tournament goodie bags or homeowners associations. So if you ever just need to get rid of stuff like koozies or other free little promo things, feel free to drop those off and we'll store them. We get so many requests. I've stopped asking businesses because it's it's just a lot. Hopefully this looks familiar too. It's a copy of one of our newsletters. So there, again, there's two different ways to get value from this other than reading it. So I told you to submit information for free. You can do a newsletter, job openings, or deals. I try to include the newest one in there, or if they all sound pretty familiar to me, then I will just choose a random one that we have on file. And then you can also pay $20 for an ad. That's $20 an issue. Basically, I I like to make things affordable when I can. You know, I want you to be able to do things without breaking the bank. And then just so you know, these are email rates from, they're from 2018, but I I promise they're about the same. Our open rate usually hovers between 30 and 35%. Our click-through rate is probably a little over 10%, which for our industry is about average. And then again, social media is an important aspect of your business. Our social media side, it's important just to be active and consistent with your social media post as a millennial. That is a sign that your business is actually active. So if you have an account, please post on it regularly. And then if you have a post you really want us to share, let me know. But we will also publish ads to our page on your behalf. I do try to limit it that way we're still using like social media and not a publishing platform. So I can be a little particular, but if you wanted to, at least once a year, we'll publish like a straight ad. And that's at no additional charge. That's just part of your membership where you say, hey, Izzy, this is important. I go, okay. And then this is the stats where, again, with COVID and everything changing, we recorded a video almost daily trying to interview some of our members. This is a screenshot of Low Country Pipe and Cigar on YouTube. And then the stats behind it are all of the ones from Facebook. So we reached a total of 20,653 people with this video campaign. And the average watch time says it was five minutes, but that doesn't sound right. I bet it means five seconds. Oh, total. Total watch time was five minutes. Average watch time was 13 seconds, which makes more sense. So I did try to edit them down to be about two or three minutes because, again, social media, people have a very short attention span. And so anytime you do your own social media videos, keep that in mind. You need to hook them in in that first 10 seconds or they're going to click away to a picture of a cat or something. But this was something we just thought was important. People wanted to know what was going on. Things were changing. And then we also kind of needed a little bit of good news. So sometimes we like to hear that, oh, my customers have been so supportive. And sometimes just nice to hear those, those good little things. So that was a campaign that we decided to do. Right, so I threw a lot of stuff at you <laughs> and that's to kind of give us a jumping off point. But if you have any questions, now is a great time to ask them. <laughs> like, how do I get to our page to update it? All right, so we're on the Chamber website, littleriverchamber.org. 
Underneath members and member login, this is the page you want. And your username is actually probably your email address. That's how I usually set it up for people. And then your password mm -hmm. would be something that you picked. So once you are logged in, it looks very different. This is what it looks like. To update your business directory listing, you want to focus on this drop down for now. So we're looking at that drop down where it says account settings. And then we want to go to company information. And you can see I'm logged in as a festival right now. This is where you update your public information, website address, established date if you want, and then you would just hit save changes. And once you hit save changes, that is live on the website. Okay. And then we're going to scroll back up. And then since we clicked on those company settings, our sidebar has changed. So now we're going to focus on the sidebar and you're just going to basically go down the line. You can actually probably skip employees. We're going to go to website information. And this first section should auto populate from the page we were just on. But this is where you update your social media next networks. And you would just go to your page, you would copy and paste the link in here. And then you need to check the box. If you don't check the box, it doesn't show up. But that's also why obviously this is not ours, but the box isn't checked. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Web description, if you want to, you can copy and paste from your about us on your web website. But keep in mind that if somebody is landing on your directory listing, this might be their first introduction to you. So again, make sure you, that you keep in mind that this person probably has no idea what you do or what your business does. So you probably want to answer those types of questions with this, this description. And you also want to do something that makes them want to click over to your site or want to call you. Because again, our goal with your listing is for them to leave us and go to you. Search results description, it can display right underneath it. So basically, a person will read this. So this is not the place to keyword stuff. I usually put two short sentences. This is about as much as you could type into this box. And here, your goal is to provide just enough information that they click over to your directory listing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hours of operation, driving description, highlights as a part of the enhanced directory add-on option if you have it. Or again, if you're a new member, we enable it for your first year. It, it'll basically show these highlights, these as bullet points. And then on the right side where it says bullet URL, this is the link. So where it says fresh local seafood, they will click that link and go to whatever page you put here. So if you offer different services, this is a great place for them to jump in directly to that page on your site. And then keywords is where you keyword stuff. You can put all the keywords in you want here. You can put your competitors' names. You can put common misspellings of your name. Those are two that I actually highly recommend doing. <laughs> um, and then again, you would hit save changes and then it's live. Categories is kind of annoying in the sense that you have to click on the actual letter to see what those options are and then you can choose them. With these, these will help you show up in different categories when people click on them in the directory. I don't care how many you click as long as it's relevant. If it's relevant to you, go crazy. And if you think we're just really missing a category, let me know because all of these, like I've, I've pr probably created half of these in the six years I've been here. So as the need arises or as we get new business or new services or whatever it is, that's, if it's big enough, that's okay. We'll create a category. If you think it's not big enough for a category, that's where you would go add it to your description or your keywords. So again, for that keyword section, you can go put in your types of services or things that people would be searching the internet for. Again, you would hit save changes, it'd be live. You can probably skip additional information. Logos is part of the page paid enhanced directory add-on option. So if you don't see options here, that's why. The member page header is a little odd. This is where it's showing up. Uh, so generally, I don't recommend a logo. You want something kind of wide, but short, because you want them to scroll down to see the more information about you, most likely, unless you just have a really nice ad that fits. Member logo, pretty self-explanatory, and that's where it shows up on this page. And then search results icon is something you don't have access to, so don't worry about it. I usually do that manually for people. And what we do is if you have the paid and enhanced director add-on, is I'll usually do it for you, or you can ask me for the ability, but I have to do it individually. But if you're not paying for that package, but you donate to the tech fee or the 110% fee, we'll put like part of our logo there. And then what it looks like, oh, I should probably describe it. Sorry. You can't read minds. All right. So I'm on the directory search page and let's say I'm interested in arts, culture, and entertainment. So I click that. So it's going to bring up a list of all the relevant businesses. Well, this is where that search logo is showing up right beside it. 
because then it's kind of drawing my eye a little bit more to that business. And then since we're on it, Alabama has a hot deal and that's what this banner and this button are from. So that's automated whenever you add one of those deals, it automatically links over to your directory. Uh, photos, again, enhanced paid enhanced directory add-on. And this is what it looks like as you would click on media. The, we have the YouTube link, so that shows first, but then it's basically different photos. Uh, generally, what I recommend is that you already have your logo, so don't do your logo. But if you have a physical location, put a picture of your physical location so that it looks familiar when they come there. And then try to do pictures of your products or services enough for it to make sense to that person. And then if you're a family owned or like just really local or want to be really personable, you can actually also put pictures of your staff for yourself. Because then when they see you, they're like, oh, I know you, Donna. Uh, and then I showed you where the video was. The only way to add the video, though, is a YouTube link. So this Disclaimer. Map pin information is pretty interesting. Usually I recommend just choosing Google Maps, checking this box, and then if you're home based business, you can just pick none. But with that, Donna, just so you know, put none for map service. But when you're doing your organization information, what I usually try to do for people if I catch it is I will delete your physical address. I'll leave your mailing address and that part's not public. That's just for chamber staff to mail you stuff. But like I'll delete the physical address, but I'll leave that city name. People then at least know your local. They're like, oh, well, she's just in Little River or North Myrtle or wherever you might want to put yourself as. But that still gives you a little bit of that local credibility. And then you can use this membership badge if you want. But I like the other one that I send out better. So great as all. I'm not super particular, though. But again, we did that. We used whenever you first join, you get a really long email from yours truly. And it'll say, create your login. And you click that link to create your password. But if it's been a while and you don't remember it or if you never did it, don't worry about it. Just let me know. It's like a two button click for me to send you um, a new, you'll get like a really long URL and you'll just click that URL and you'll create your own password. And then anytime you go to the Chamber website, members, member login. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, well, that's really all I had planned unless anybody wants to get off topic. But um, I do want to thank you guys. I appreciate just being interested in the Chamber. Um, it, 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 it does mean a big deal to us. And then if there's ever anything we can do or change to help maintain relevancy for you, we want to support you. We want to help you grow. So if you ever have ideas, recommendations, feedback, even if you don't like something, let us know you don't like it. Or if you want to see something new, let us know what that new thing is. Again, thank you. Thank you.